Hey guys, welcome back. And uh, if you're new here, I'm Jim. I am making tutorial videos around Luminar Neo. It came out recently and I've been covering a lot of different aspects of the app. Um, a number of these are possibly refreshers for those of you that um, have had previous versions of Luminar because there's a lot of sort of DNA that has come from like Luminar AI over to Luminar Neo. Uh, but those of you that are new to any of these products and have Luminar Neo, these videos are really designed to help you get up to speed quickly. I've got an entire playlist here with all my Luminar Neo videos, and I've been making videos around getting started and the catalog and presets and layers and, let's see, paint masking. And today I'm starting in kind of on the editing. I'm going to go through the essentials section to kind of give you an idea of kind of how this stuff works. If you haven't yet subscribed, please uh, hit that um, subscribe button down below, assuming you're interested in these kind of videos. If not, maybe you're in the wrong place. Anyway, we're going to jump into that. I've got a photo here, and I've got this essentials section over here on the right. And what I want to do is I'm going to walk through these um, kind of at a high level, kind of quick, talk about generally what they do. Um, as the name implies, essentials are very essential. Um, I actually start here every single time. So it sounds, uh, essentials all, almost makes it sound like it's not particularly advanced and that sort of thing. And actually these are incredibly powerful and useful tools. Let's get into it. And by the way, I also have a history of doing some deep dive videos on specific tools or filters, whatever you want to call them. I will be coming back and doing that on a number of these. So again, this is going to be high level stuff. Uh, develop, and this is a raw file. So if you have a raw file, it'll say develop raw there. But uh, this is where I start 99.9% .9 of the time. And that's simply because this is Prob not probably, this is the most powerful tool or filter in Luminar Neo. You've got camera profiles here. Uh, this section, light, is hugely uh, important where you can adjust uh, highlights and shadows and contrast and you know really have just a huge impact on your photo in just a couple of seconds. Um, black and whites, if you want to set your black point or white point. Curves, which I did a video about there. Very powerful, very useful, lots of control over light, contrast, and color. I'm not going to go into it here. It's just way too much to cover in addition to everything else that I'll be covering in this video. The color section is fantastic. Setting white balance, getting your temperature and tint right, as well as saturation and vibrance. So in this case, I might go a little cooler, which I tend to have a habit of doing in a lot of photos, and also maybe dragging the tint slightly to the right. This was shot in uh, Florence, Italy, uh, close to sunset. And maybe I want to bump up the vibrance a little bit just to get me a little bit more of that um, color pop that I tend to like. So that's... Um, it's a very useful section of the develop tool, and I use it all the time. Sharpness, as the name implies, in fact, by the way, when you finish with these tools, you can just click on them, and it will uh, collapse them back so that you don't have everything open at one time. Um, sharpening uh, works fine. I will admit, I don't often sharpen my photos that much, but you've got some controls there that would come in very useful. Same with noise reduction, and again, I'm going to close that just to keep the menu a little cleaner. Um, luminosity or color, and then you can and boost it so I might use this to smooth some things out although I often use other tools for that as well which I will talk about in a second and then the last one is optics and this is great for distortion and that sort of thing note that you have different uh, slightly different buttons here if you have a raw file then if you have like a JPEG or a TIFF just wanted you to be aware of that but these are super useful tools and I really think of develop as the name implies is really it, you're kind of getting things started and you're getting set to go in and edit your photo with a bunch of other tools that are included here in Luminar Neo. So once you click that, you'll know that um, it clicks, uh, or excuse me, that filter is now over here on the edit tab. And there it is with all the different adjustments that I made in it. So I'm going to move on to Accent AI. And this one's a fantastic tool just for, it's kind of the one slider to rule them all, just to give you a one click kind of um, adjustment adjustment to a photo that's with this Accent AI. So Enhance AI is the tool. Within it, there's two different sliders. Accent AI may be one of the most popular tools in all of Luminar. It's been in previous versions. I use it all the time. I just recommend that you're a little bit careful with it because if you go like that, it really has a huge impact on the photo, especially like in this case where I've already done some edits to the photo. It bumps up light, it readjusts the light basically, so it impacts contrast, light distribution, it also pops color. So as, as you can see, 
things can get over the top really quick. So I tend to go kind of sparing with this tool, but it is really useful. And then Sky Enhancer, you can see what that does as I drag this to the right. It kind of acts like a polarizer. I use it some, but not a ton. But again, a very useful tool, those two. And um, I just, uh, I use them all the time, to be honest. Next is Erase. And if you uh, weren't aware, there's automatic power line and dust spot removal. And yes, I see dust spots in this photo. So I'm gonna click on that, let them go ahead and get taken out of the photo for me, which is a huge time saver, I think, and certainly useful for me. And it's done. It's got all the dust spots out of the sky. I think that looks great. I did notice that there's a spot right down here in the water. So you can come in and just do that yourself. Click on that and then just hit erase and it will take out additional spots like that if it doesn't get them all. And that's really how erase works. You just go in, brush over whatever it is you need to do, and then you're done. Um, Structure AI, very popular tool uh, with yours truly and with a lot of other people. And as the name implies, it, it adds or removes structure from a photo. So if you're asking what is structure, I'll just go to 100 and it's easier if I just visibly show you than try to describe it. I call it crunch, but I don't know, it makes me think of um, like when you go to 100, which I don't recommend doing, but um, it does kind of remind me a little bit of kind of that, that HDR kind of crispy kind of look. Now, I don't do it significantly. I tend to go a little bit lower. And the other thing I like to do is get the masking brush and paint it in. In this case, I would paint it into the, the buildings and I would not put it in the sky or water. Here's another thing you can do though. Um, and that is go negative. So negative structure is something I'm a huge fan of, and I do this in lots of videos. If you've been here before, you already know this. And in my case, I like to paint that into skies and water because it accentuates that smooth, kind of just that calm look. In, in this case, this was a long exposure. Of, I, I don't remember, a minute or two, I don't know. But when I go left, and again, that's negative 100 is probably too much, but it really does create an additional impact in terms of making it smooth. And once again, I would go ahead and brush that in to the sky and the water here. I'm actually not gonna use the tool on this photo, but I wanted to point out the two different ways to use it. Super useful, amazing tool. I honestly use it on just probably, probably just about every single photo. Okay, next up is color, and there's basically two key sections to color. There's this top section, saturation, vibrance, and removing a color cast. Saturation is basically a blunt instrument. It's every color just goes, you know, uh, if you go to the right, it just gets uh, more intense, and of course to the left would be the opposite. Vibrance, I think of that as kind of a, a way to pop some of the non-dominant colors, and you know, in a photo like this, it already has a lot of color. There's, uh, there's, there's already just a lot of color. So I would probably use Vibrance or maybe not either of these possibly, but in terms of saturation and Vibrance, I tend to use Vibrance a little bit more because saturation is, like I said, kind of a blunt instrument and everything just gets impacted. Whereas Vibrance, to my eyes, seems to basically enhance some of the non-dominant colors. Remove color cast, as the name implies, if it's detecting a color cast, it will take that out of your photo. I don't feel like I have one here that I need to change, so I'm gonna leave that. But HSL is huge. That stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. And so if you come down here, you've got drop down menus, hue, saturation, and luminance. And as the name implies, hue is kind of the, sh the shade of the color. Saturation is the amount or intensity. And luminance is basically how bright is that color. And so as you can see here, it's isolated these eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight different colors, and you can go in and adjust the hues accordingly. So um, there's a lot of orange and yellow, so let me just show you what this will do. This orange, if I go to the right uh, and create, take it more towards the kind of greenish yellow, you can see what it's doing and where it's impacting. And if I go left, again, I'm exaggerating it here, and if you go left, it's creating a lot of that red. Uh, yellow is kind of the same thing, it's not as much, so this is telling me there's more orange in the photo because the impact was greater, but if you drag that to the right, you can see what the yellow is doing, and if I go to the left, that actually looks pretty good like that, maybe not quite that much, and you know, maybe what I would do is probably come in and play with these a little bit, and then you've got the blue here as well if you want to create a little bit more of a different shade of blue. Now, keep in mind, I'm on hue, so I also wanna come into saturation and basically pull down the saturation of the orange and yellow because maybe it's a little too much and maybe I want a little bit more saturation of blue because I want a cooler overall look like that. So 
this is a tool that gives you a lot, a lot, a lot of control over color with all these individual color channels. And of course, because you can reuse tools in Neo, I could just click to close it and commit it, and then I could come back, open it again, and reapply some different things and just mask them in separately each time. I won't be doing that here, and if you're curious about masking, check out my uh, paint mask or brush mask video, but I wanted to point out the power and the control that you have over color with that color tool. Next is black and white, and you know, honestly, you just open the tool, click convert to black and white, and there you have it. The key thing to me here is controlling black and whites with the luminance slider. Uh, now you've got saturation, so if you wanted to bring back a little bit of those warmer tones, you could do something like that. Um, I don't really like that. Or, you know, if you wanted to bring back just some of the blue tones, you could do something like that. Um, you can get creative and interesting looks that way. I don't use the saturation tab that much, but I use the luminance tab when I convert to black and white all the time because luminance, again, is the a brightness uh, or light level of particular colors. So if you want the blues to be darker, you can create a bit more dramatic monochrome by doing things like that. Uh, and, you know, maybe take the yellows and the reds, create them a little bit brighter or darker, whatever. So you've got a lot of different options here to really create a interesting and unique and impactful monochrome. If you're interested in a monochrome video, let me know down below. I, uh, I love monochromes. I'm a big color guy kind of at heart, but in the last couple of years, I've really embraced monochromes, have a lot of fun with them, love them, so I'll be coming back and doing that for sure. Okay, details. These are really powerful, and again, the best thing to show uh, how they work is just to drag them to the right, and kind of you can start to see what's happening to the photo. You gotta be careful with these, and this is another situation where I recommend being really good friends with that paintbrush, because you wanna paint these in selectively to probably most photos, where you might just wanna come in and paint in, um, and not this much, but you know maybe a lesser, you know, reduced version of these details and paint them in to the, like the buildings and the bridge here is what I would do. Therefore, they would not be impacting the sky. So, um, and I'll come back, there's masking here and, and there's sharpening and there's a whole lot. So if you want to see more information about that, I'm happy to come back and talk about it. But details are there, they're powerful. Just, I recommend brushing them in just so that you have better control over it. Okay, denoise, uh, you've got a, a couple of different settings here, luminosity and color. And kind of like I talked about up here in develop, because you have similar things here, you're basically able to control the amount of noise in your photo. I think it does a fine job. I don't think it's amazing, but it works fine for me. Um, I use it some, but I tend to, depending on how noisy it is for me, noise reduction is kind of just smoothing out the details and trying to kind of obscure them. And so I like to do that negative structure, but you could also do that with details. You could go negative and mask it in there. So I recommend just experimenting and finding what works best for you. But denoise comes in really handy. And then of course, boost, uh, as the name implies, is just gonna take whatever settings you have and just kind of amplify them. Uh, landscape category, so dehaze, uh, you can see what that does. It's kind of cutting through any kind of cloudiness. It almost acts a little bit like a polarizer. Golden hour, I love, I use all the time. It takes the warmer tones and really bumps them up and amplifies them. So if you don't have any warm tones in your photo, you're probably not gonna see a lot of impact from Golden Hour, but this one has tons of warm tones as you can see, and you can see what it's doing. It's really just intensifying those. Um, I don't need it on this photo because I've already got so much warmth in the buildings and the bridge, but I use it all the time on like sunsets, sunrises, you know, golden hour, things like that. Those kind of photos, absolutely use it for that. And in fact, I even use it on city shots, like uh, blue hour kind of shots, where maybe I want to amp up a little bit of the warm tones that are in the image. It's a nice compliment to things like that. And then you've got foliage enhancer, which um, as you can see in this bottom right corner, it's basically amping up those greens because it's detecting that foliage, but not something I use a ton. It can have a nice impact on your photo. Uh, and then you've got a foliage hue. So if you turn this on, you can help adjust the hue. Uh, as you can see, like I go all the way to the left, it's creating a little bit warmer and less green kind of look to the foliage. So again, things to play with, experiment with, and have fun with to get creative in your edits. And the last one is vignette. Powerful tool, love it. It's very obvious what it is, uh, but choose subject is fantastic. In a photo like this, you probably just go right down the middle, which is actually what it defaults to, so you don't need it if you're gonna go right down the middle. Uh, but you can go uh, you know, left or right with it if you want to. I don't really recommend going to the right. I, I personally don't like the white edge kind of vignettes, but you know, to each his own. But once you turn that on, you can adjust the size. 
of the vignette. And then you've got advanced settings, uh, roundness, feathering, and inner light. And inner light is one of my favorite uh, components of probably any tool in Illuminar. I use it all the time. And that's just, as the name implies, it's basically going to take the center of your vignette and just uh, brighten it up, right? And so, you know, on a photo like this, I'm probably going to go straight down the center with my vignette. But if I wanted to, I could go, like, let's say there was something of interest over here. I can click on Choose Subject and then click it again to set it. And then my amount and, you know, size. And you can kind of see what I'm doing. A nice little trick is um, if you go like that with the roundness or that uh, and take the feathering uh, all the way left, you can kind of see, there you go, I had to experiment, I don't do this all the time, but that gives you the ability to kind of figure out exactly where your vignette is. And then you can come in and say, okay, that's where I do want the center of the vignette. Now let me adjust the roundness. And I tend to like a high feather vignette because I like that smooth transition. And then you know where the inner light's gonna apply. So in this case, I'll apply it kind of over there on the left-hand side based on where I place the center of the vignette. Um, I'm not going to use a vignette here. I like the photo the way it is. And, and this was just kind of a practice edit. But the point is, these Essentials tools, don't let the name Essentials you know, steer you clear of them for some reason because maybe it doesn't sound professional because there is a professional category. But Essentials, very powerful tools, very useful. And I, like I said, it would be very rare if I did not start with Develop and kind of work my way through. That's actually something I do. I tend to follow the, uh, the lineup here of tools. It seems very logical to me how they're lined up and set up and, and uh, you know, ready to use. So that's uh, an overview of Essentials. If there are specific tools you would like me to come back in and do deep dives on, let me know. Leave me a comment down below. I will be covering some of these anyway as I kind of work my way through NEO. Don't forget to check out that playlist if you want to see my other NEO videos. Other than that, have a great day, my friends. Thanks for stopping by, hanging out, watching, all that stuff. Hope you're well. Stay safe out there. We'll talk soon. And until then, adios.